this second world paradigm when the computer programming just initiated in basic language and c language when just initially started what happened people used to do something why computer programming took this step people got some solution faster and it all, all everything all scientific progress starts during a new war so when the programmers were writing the code so sometimes one of the programmer found that an insect insect had just was sitting on the screen one insect another programmer told him oh what are you looking that you bug on your screen you see that the bug moves out so in the process while making little bit air so that the bug will move out the programmer made some mistake programmer made some mistake in play, in writing the code something else he wrote the code because he was little bit mentally disturbed during the second world war time so the war came with the program didn't run so other his fellow programmer told that your program is giving mistake then the other programmer told you know a bug was there sitting on my screen and i was trying to push it out and in the process i made some mistake i made some mistake so the word came mistake mistake is a is an outcome of doing something unknowingly he knows the correct syntax everything he knows but due to some reason or other he made some mistake we call we tell usually oh i did it by mistake i didn't want to do but somehow it happened by mistake so something unknowingly while writing a code we sometimes miss a comma or sometimes miss something important thing and the result is to be something erroneous you have seen it in the syntax you know the syntax but while writing the code you miss something so that is a mistake that means something unknowingly it occurs without any intention but then subsequently another word came up called as error people became very careful they wrote the program correctly whatever to their knowledge whatever to their knowledge ah a word came knowledge still then the program gave a error gave an error so why the error occurs why the error occurs because due to ignorance the programmer thinks that i know the semantic or syntax correctly but he doesn't know it for example i will ask rishabh soni to write a program in julia a language slowly will learn in future in every application domain a language you will hear julia so i will ask rishabh you go through the language today and tomorrow you write a program for this he hasn't covered everything tonight so tomorrow while writing a program you will make some something wrong out of which ignorance so when the program will not run properly then whatever the outcome will come we will tell that oh the outcome is erroneous erroneous so outcome is due to ignorance of reserve ignorance but mistake is not due to ignorance mistake is due to some coincidence unknowingly coincidence mistake by mistake i did it 
I did want to do, but by mistake. I wanted to, I know that there should be a comma or full stop. I just missed it by mistake. That means unknowingly. But here, error occurs due to ignorance. Okay. So when the, for example, you want to make a package of all the sorting programs, bubble sort, every sort, 10 modules you have made, and then you want to make a package. So if one module doesn't work properly, everything goes erroneous. Then we call, oh, the package behaves faulty. So the faults occur when error occurs. It's an outcome of error or mistake. That's the fault, outcome of mistake or error. Mistake is unknowingly and error is due to ignorance. Then failure. So fault occurs out of mistake or error. Failure when the as Rishabh told it correctly, failure means it's an it's an outcome of expected versus actual. After testing, you are not getting the desired outcome. You did a lot of testing. You have read it, black box, white box testing, smoke testing, a lot of testing you have read. But still then, you are not getting the desired outcome. Because there is error in the code. You are not getting the desired outcome. Even if sometimes there is no error, no fault, the problem is due to your assumption. There is no problem in the fault, in the, in the code. But while assuming, while you start thinking about making a code, as we do in our design process, fixing up the number of components, connectors properly, there is some error, there is no error in the code, but there is error in our assumption, in our planning, in our analysis and design, then the failure occurs, software fails. You have read it, alpha testing and beta testing, so the failures are identified at the alpha testing and beta testing stage. Any error, anything error, we have assumed something wrong. From the SRS, from the SRS, our understanding was wrong. There we catch. During the whole process, we somehow missed it. So we identify the failure. Then we deliver the software to the client. For the, for example, the bank, whatever you are doing, the bank is, for example, or SBI or any bank, you have delivered it. The bank started using it. You, <clears throat> you tell the bank, yes, I have done all the varieties of testing and it is failure free. The bank started using it, but after a month or two or three, you find that the software gives problem. So then the client says, what software you developed is still defective. It is still defective. So the word comes defective. In or other, it didn't give the expected result. After a few months, the problem got identified. A few days back, I went through the newspaper, the Paytm software. I think Paytm is in our country since five years, more than five years. But in 
एटीएम्स हम फ्रॉड सर के फ्रॉड फ्रॉड कैसे सर करें हाउ द सॉफ्टवेयर इज स्टिल डिफेक्टिव सम फ्रॉड स्टार्स फ्रॉड स्टार्स मींस दो जो हैव द कैपेबिलिटी टू क्रैक इट सम फ्रॉड स्टार्स आर एबल टू क्रैक द सॉफ्टवेयर एंड डू सम मैनिपुलेशन सो दैट दे टेक अवे सम मनी using paytm this thing you might have heard few days back some news items come so that we call that software is still defective so defective at the client side so defect occurs even after all the testing even after you claim that it is free from all fault then it comes defective then we call it gave defect it became defective and it is now a failed software or the failure has occurred for the software so the failure term comes here software failure because it got defect it is a failed software or nowadays that bug what we initially identified that bug is no more being used at the initial stage nowadays the the clients are telling oh you delivered a buggy software a software which has some bugs still then you have not rectified the bugs you didn't do the testing properly some bugs are still there a buggy software you will hear this term so box are still there because our software got failed there are, it it gave rise to failure of our system so def, when defects are identified failure occurs and in the present day term it is called as a buggy software the box are still there nowadays people are not telling that bugs are there in the initial programming step rather that concept has been changed earlier it was during second world war 1945 but now the third process has been changed people are calling the defect is here it is giving problem so bugs are there if you can rectify within 15 days or a month fine otherwise we are going to discard this software so this term bug is now being used at the end presently earlier it was being used at the initial stage of writing code but now in the present day scenario the thought process has been changed as debobaya was telling there are two concepts one is prescribed another is described prescribed means you think something but it doesn't you get change you change it later on so you call it describe describe the software or describe the architecture so likewise the bug is now presently used in the later stage when the software start giving problem in the client side then it is called as a defective one and when the defects are asked to be rectified then usually the client call it as a there are some box in the software please get rid of the box and give me back so the term has been changed so this is what you will be using this term all along through your life if if at all you are in the field of software development so my dear students keep all these terms very clear in your mind so defects occur at the end at the site of the at the site of the client okay 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 that's all another term yesterday the bobaya was telling that reliability model is being is being sorted out using a technique called as hidden markov model hidden markov model h m m what is that model anybody has gone through any markov model did anybody go through anything yesterday night 
what is that markov model anybody siddharth what is that markov model siddharth drop try siddharth what is that markov model what did you sleep yesterday why did you go through anything everything is there in the net what is that markov model रिलायबिलिटी वट इज रिलायबिलिटी निर्मल निर्मल सर व्हाट डू मीन बाय रिलायबिलिटी सर रिलायबिलिटी मींस दैट वी कैन डिपेंड ऑन दैट इन टर्म्स ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर वी कैन डिपेंड ऑन दैट सॉफ्टवेयर दैट इट विल गिव अस अ करेक्ट रिजल्ट ऑल ऑल द टाइम नॉट ऑल द टाइम देयर यू मेड अ मिस्टेक एवरीथिंग हैज गॉट अ टाइम मैक्सिमम ऑफ द टाइम हां यस सर एवरीथिंग हैज गॉट अ टाइम फ्रेम for example for example jitendra has purchased a motorcycle okay jitendra has got a motorbike so he went to the shop what is the reliability of the motorbike then the shop owner says oh it will behave reliably for coming 15 years so whatever the specification assigned with the software or a motorbike is supposed to behave as per its specification during a time frame so time is always associated with associated with any item where reliability concept comes into the picture okay so reliability so reliability is always associated with a term which siddharth told that it is a statistical model or a probabilistic model probabilistic where some amount of probability is associated probabilistic what is that the probability of the motorbike giving problem probability of least failure during its period of operation so what is the probability of occurrences of least occurrences of failure least occurrences what comes least least occurrences of failure or another term comes into the mind keep it in mind all the time in life everybody will ask everybody will ask reliability is very much associated with anything your motorbike or software or anything or cycle or anything that mean time mean time between failure two failures for example the failure is between t1 Three days back, Jitendra's motorcycle gave problem. Today morning it gave problem. So again he repaired. Then, uh, then for example at T zero it has given problem. At T one it gave problem. Then again it gave problem. At T two it gave problem. So the time gap, time gap between T zero and T one, for example it is five days. then t1 to t2 for example it is 13 days so these are all random in nature mean time between two failures are random if he sets it correctly today repairs it correctly then it may not give problem for another 25 days so again 25 another 25 days so the mean time so mean time between two failures between two failures What is the mean time? Uh, 
For example, Sri Lanka's laptop is giving problem all along. So, the mean time between two failures should be as least as possible. Then only you can call it as a reliable product. Okay? So, that reliability concept is well modeled. When you will read further, I will ask you sometimes in future, you go through it, I will ask you randomly. Siddharth, you read it. Nirmal, you read it, I will ask you. So it is based on a Markov model. Anybody has heard the name of Markov model? Any Markov model? Anybody has heard? Nobody? It's a statistical model. Anybody is Anybody has heard of it? Markov model? Nobody? Achha. कोई पढ़ता नहीं है और क्या दिल्ली में तो रेखा घूमता है पढ़ता नहीं है रेखा क्यों नहीं पढ़ने के लिए इंटरेस्ट देते हो कल क्यों नहीं पढ़ा सो नोबडी नोज एनीथिंग अबाउट दिस वर्ड मार्कोव मॉडल व्हाट इज दैट मार्कोव मॉडल इट्स अ प्रोबेबिलिस्टिक और स्टैटिस्टिकल मॉडल ए मैथमेटिशियन इन द ईयर 1932 19 22. He had developed a Russian mathematician. He had developed this model. What is that? He was sitting beside a pond. One day in the evening, he was sitting beside a pond. In the summer season, when the wind is very nice, in the evening he was sitting beside a pond. You see how the people get new ideas just to think. Listen to it. They were sitting beside a pond in the evening of a summer season. Wind was very impressive, very nice, very cool breeze of wind. He was enjoying. There were a lot of leaves in the pond. Gaon mein dekho ke risab. Lily leaves are there in the pond. Lily flower ki. So there are a lot of leaves on the pond. A small frog was jumping from one leaf. He was sitting a small frog. It the frog doesn't have any any much weight. So it was jumping from one leaf to another leaf. अंदर लीफ लिली फ्लावर की जो लीफ है वो फ्रॉग इट वॉज जम्पिंग फ्रॉम वन लीफ टू अनादर इट वॉज सिटिंग ईयर देन आफ्टर समाइम इट वॉज जम्पिंग फ्रॉम वन लीफ टू अनादर देन अगेन इट वॉज सिटिंग देयर फॉर समाइम देन इट वॉज जम्पिंग टू अनादर लीफ ए वेरी स्मॉल दैट्स वाइट मिस्टर मार्कोव ए ए मार्कोव ए रोशियन मैथमेटिशियन He observed it. Then he developed a statistical theory. What is that statistical theory? The probability of future state. That means, one patta se dusra patta, dusra patta is future state. the probability of occurrence of future state depends on the availability of the state at the time being that means in the present state it doesn't depend it doesn't depend on the previous state do you understand what i told the probability of occurrence of the future state for example there are three states t0 was the previous state where the frog was sitting earlier now it has come to another leaf at time t1 then from this leaf it plans it plans to jump To another leaf at time t zero, at time t two, t two, t zero, t one, and t two. 
to the probability of occurrence of the future event that means ye kab ye second patta mein pahunchegi at the leaf l2 depends on its condition at leaf l1 not on the previous condition which it was there at leaf l0 bahut important all probability is based on this that means future occurrence depends on present it doesn't depend on the past it doesn't depend on the past it doesn't depend on the <coughs> state at t0 it depends on the state at t1 at t2 what it will accept what state it will have that depends on t1 not depends on it doesn't depend on the previous it doesn't depend on the previous state at which state it was there earlier it depends on the present from here it will jump to next leaf so this is a very good model in probability statistics called as a markov model and further this model is a little bit changed and a model has come up called as hidden markov model how things get hidden you will study slowly if anybody wants any interest extra interest that i will sir read and solve some problem on hidden markov model you are always welcome and you can contact me if you feel that you have some spare time you can read you can very well <clears throat> enhance your knowledge by solving the problems of reliability using reliability model by yes yes please sir so we uh, in nlp we learn this uh, hidden markov model acha uh, you are learn it na okay okay if anybody is interested or uh, nlp they will be reading na the next semester there will be an next semester they will be reading. okay if anybody is interested they can study something in this semester also and they can also apply nlp in your fraud detection also hey, they can apply hidden markov model in this semester with you they can work if they have the interest depends on their interest okay okay now today devo bhai has some urgent work so he is absent ye uh, our ingole bhaiya will start <clears throat> devo bhaiya had covered yesterday up to chapter how many slides 10 slides sir 10 slides it was covered so 11th one he will be <clears throat> ingole bhaiya will be covering from 11th yeah ओके फ्रेमवर्क इंप्लीमेंटेशन फ्रेमवर्क ये इंगोले आपकी जो इंप्लीमेंटेशन बता रहे हो इसमें काफी जुड़ा हुआ है तो ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ आर स्टूडियो ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ यूएमएल उसको एग्जांपल देके आप बताते रहना ठीक है ये इंप्लीमेंटेशन की कॉन्टेक्स्ट में है ओके बता so okay so we will start with the architecture implementation frameworks today so in the ideal approach uh, what we will do uh, what we will do is uh, we develop architecture based on a known style so we will select a style uh, in the in the ideal approach you are talking about so we will select a style we will select a technology that provides implementation support for each architectural element so uh, we are selecting architectural style which is already there and then we are selecting a technology to implement the architect architecture style so it is the ideal approach so, but there are some draw drawbacks with this ideal approach so this is rarely easy to uh, easy or trivial so uh, very few a few programming languages have explicit support for architecture level constructs so whatever architecture we are uh, developing so there are very few programming languages that have explicit support for this architecture level constructs and a uh, support infrastructure like libraries operating system etc also has its own set of sets of concepts metaphors and rules so th these are some drawbacks so to mitigate this uh, mismatches we leverage an architecture implementation framework 
so you all uh, are familiar with the word framework so so here is the definition so uh, for example uh, to give the example of frameworks we know angular js is a framework spring is a fr framework uh, django is a framework so all these are frameworks so so the definition is an architecture implementation framework is a piece of software that acts as a bridge between a particular architecture style and a set of implementation technologies so a framework uh, a framework is a bridge between an architecture style and the implementation technology so it provides key element of the architectural style in code in a way that assists developers in implementing systems that confirms the prescription and a constant of the style so the framework is giving us uh, already like a, a pseudo code type so it provides key elements of the architecture style in codes the framework will provides provide us with the code uh, the, uh, of the architecture itself so in a way that assist developers in implementing system that confirms the prescription and constants of the style so by uh, by using the framework uh, we, we we are uh, confirming to the prescri uh, prescription and constants of the styles so here is the example of a standard io framework so the standard io framework in unix and uh, in unix and other operating systems so perhaps the most prevalent framework in use today so the style supported is pipe and filter so standard out uh, io framework uh, it supports the pipe and filter style uh, implementation technologies supported are uh, concurrent process oriented operating systems and uh, generally non concurrent languages like c also so in c you have seen that at the start of the program we like we write uh, standard io header file so it uses this standard io framework of unix only so more on frameworks so frameworks are meant to assist developers in following styles but generally do not constrain developers from violating a style if they really want to so a developer is using some framework for developing some software so he will follow the whatever constants are there but generally do, do not constrain developers from violating a style so developing applications in a target style does not require a framework but if you follow a good software so it is not a uh, mandatory to use a framework so developing application in a target style we have some architecture style selected so it is not mandatory to use a framework for that but if you follow good software engineering practices you will probably end up developing one anyway so frameworks are generally considered as underlying infrastructure or substrates from an architecture perspective so you won't usually see the framework shows up in a in an architectural model so whenever you draw architecture model like in r studio we draw for uh, for the atm so while drawing the architecture uh, you usually don't see the framework so frameworks are generally considered as underlying infrastructure for an architecture perspective we, uh, we don't see while drawing the architecture diagram or what is the framework we are using we have same style different frameworks so for a given style there is no one perfect architecture framework uh, we have selected some style architecture style but it's not necessary there will be a perfect architecture for that frame uh, perfect framework for that architecture so different target implementation technologies induce different frameworks so for different technologies there will be different frameworks for doing the same thing so here for the standard input output we are saying we have standard io uh, io stream versus uh, java io so all these are standard input output frameworks but uh, for the same technology but they are different we have standard io we have standard io we have io stream and we have java io for java technology so here basically uh, they are saying that for a uh, for architecture there can be different types of framework for the same same architecture style there can be different uh, frameworks and even in the same uh, style target technology groupings different frameworks exist due to different qualitative properties of frameworks now again in same technology grouping we have different frameworks so here the example is java io and java nio so is java new io it's nio stand for new input output new io so the uh, the first point we see 
for uh, for say uh, a style there are different frameworks uh, which uh, different frameworks and different technologies and in the second point for a single technology we have different frameworks in java we have java io or io versus java nio and the second example is various c2 style frameworks in java so the next point is evaluating frameworks so how we are evaluating the frameworks uh, so there are four points for this we have platform support fidelity matching assumptions and efficiency so we will start with the first point the first is uh, platform support so it says uh, target language operating systems and other technologies so does the framework supports the target languages does the framework supports the operating system and other technologies what is the support for the framework the second one is the fidelity so fidelity the meaning of fidelity is like the degree of exactness with exactness with which something is copied so it says that how much style specific support is provided by the framework uh, so it says that uh, for a specific architecture style to what degree uh, it, pro it provides support for the style the framework uh, provides support for the style up to which degree so many frameworks are more general than one target style or focus on a subset of the st style rules so there are many uh, frameworks which are more general than one target style so which can be used for more than uh, one style architectural styles or focus on a sub subset of a st uh, style rules and how much enforcement is provided so these are uh, platform support and fidelity the third is matching assumptions so style inputs input constraints on the target architectural applications so whenever we are selecting a style architecture or style it imposes constraint on the target architecture or application so frameworks can induce constraint as well so frameworks will have their own constraint as well so some examples are given we have startup order communication patterns so these are the constraint uh, induced by the framework itself so to what extent does the framework make too many or too few assumptions so what are the assumptions made by the framework are they too many or too few so this all uh, comes under the matching assumptions and the last point is efficiency so frameworks pervade target application and can potentially get involved in any interaction so pervades pervades mean uh, be, be present and apparent throughout pervade means so a framework pervades target application and can potentially get involved in an in, in an in, in any interaction so to what extent does the framework limit its it slow down and provide help to imp improve efficiency if possible uh, suppose we are selecting some framework so we will see what is the efficiency of the framework uh, to what extent it involves uh, with our technology to what extent does the framework limits it slow down and provide help to improve efficiency if possible so these are the four points uh, for evaluating a framework we have uh, platform support uh, what target languages it supports operating systems we have fidelity how much style specific support is provided and the third one is uh, matching assumptions like frameworks can induce their own constraints and the fourth one is efficiency how efficient is the framework and there's one more point is other quality considerations for evaluating a framework so nearly every other software quality can affect framework evaluation and selection so we have size cost what uh, size of framework cost ease of use how you, how easy it is, it is used to use the framework we have reliability robustness then the next is availability of source code we have portability and the last one is long term maintainability and support so how easy it is to maintain and support now the next is middleware middleware and component models so we have seen the framework now the next is middleware and component models so uh, this may all sound similar to various kinds of middleware components framework so corba com dcom java beans dot net java message message service etc so all these are middleware so there is a lot of uh, similarity between middleware and uh, frameworks so they are very closely related in a way that both 
provide developers with services not available in the underlying OS language. Or Corba provides well-defined interfaces, portability, remote procedure calls, and uh, JavaBin provides a standardized packaging framework, the Bean, uh, with new kinds of intro, uh, introspection and bindings. So we can see that the fr uh, framework and middleware are very closely related. Uh, to a framework is or to distinguish between the framework and the middleware we can say that a framework is something like a development environment that is primarily uh, characterized by libraries so it is something that, like a develop, development environment a framework and a middleware is primarily a uh, used for integration purpose so you can keep it uh, in mind that a uh, framework is something like development environment and the middleware is for integration purpose so, but both are a uh, uh, little bit uh, same. So, we will see the next slide. So, indeed, architecture implementation frameworks are form, forms of middleware. So, there are subtle difference in how they emerge and develop. So, uh, middleware generally evolves based on a set of services that the developers want to have available. So it's saying that middleware generally evolves based on a set of services that the developers want to have available. So you have seen the core bar, so supports for language heterogeneity, network transparency, and portability. And the next is a framework generally evolved based on a part a particular architecture style that developers want to use. So the framework evolves. Uh, it's like based uh, based on a particular architecture style. So what is the style we are using? According to that, the framework evolves, and uh, that developers want to use. And so why why is this important? So by focusing on services, middleware developers often make other decisions that substantially impact architecture. So while using the middleware. So by focusing on the services only, so developers often make other decisions that substantially impact the architecture. So the example is in supporting network transparency and language heterogeneity, or by uses RPC. So but uh, but is RPC necessary for these services or is it just an enabling technique? So here the developer is making some decision. He is uh, it's he is using uh, RPC in Corba. So, but it is RPC necessary for the services or it is just an enabling technique. So, in a, uh, in a very real way, middleware induces an architecture style. So, Corba induces the distributed object style and JMC induces a distributed implicit invocation style. So, uh, middleware have their own architecture style, they induces an architectural style. Induces, uh, we can say that use, give rise to or uh, bring about middleware have their own or brings out an architecture style. Understanding these implications is essentially for not having major problems when the tail wags the dog. So here is the important phrase, we have the tail wags the dog. So here it's saying that uh, we have the middleware and we are uh, changing so much the middleware that it is having the impact on the architecture itself. The next point is resolving mismatches. So a style is chosen first, but the middleware selected for implementation does not support or contradict that style. So now we will see what are the mismatches that can happen by selecting a middleware. So a style is chosen first, we have chosen a style, but the middleware which we have chosen, the middleware uh, selected for implementation does not support that style. So the middle, middleware which we have chosen is not supporting the style. The second mismatch uh, which can happen is a middleware is chosen first. We have chosen a middleware and has undue influence on the architectural style used. So here the middleware is having an influence on the architectural style and in the first we are choosing the style. But the middleware selected for implementation does not support. So what are the strategies for uh, resolving these mismatch, uh, mismatches? So the first one we have is change or adapt the style. We will adapt or change the style according to the middleware. The second one is change the middleware selected. Uh, we don't want to change or adapt the style. So we can, what we can do is we can change the middleware, change the middleware selected. And now the uh, third and fourth point 
it's written that use the middleware as the basis for a, a framework. So the two points are develop GNU code and leverage parts of the middleware and ignore other. And the last one is hide the middleware in components and connectors. So we will see the example of this hide the middleware in components and connectors. So to resolve the mismatches between the style and the middleware. So here we have using middleware to implement connector. And you have seen hide the middleware in components and connectors. So on the left hand side we can see we have component one, component two, we have a connector, a sync event. So the arrow is showing its architecture. Now hide the middleware in components and connectors. So on the left hand side we can see the implementation we have component, component two, but the async event we are using RPC remote procedure call instead of an event. We have this thread, we have thread one, thread two. And we are using a RPC. So we can also build a new framework. There are some guidelines for this also. So building a new framework. So occasionally you need a new framework. So what are the reasons why we need a new framework? So the architecture style is used in use is novel. So the architecture style we are using. There are no. It's a new archi architecture style. No framework are available. The architectural style is not novel, but it is being implemented on a platform for which no framework exists. So we have chosen architectural style and we have chosen a technology, but uh, no framework is available for the technology. And the third is the architectural style is not novel and the framework exists for the target platform, but the existing frameworks are inadequate. So the third point is saying uh, we are we, we have chosen architectural style. We have also the framework available. But the framework is inadequate. So that's why we need a new framework. So good framework development is extremely difficult. Developing a new framework is difficult. So frameworks pervade nearly every aspect of your system. So it's a, a framework. We can see it's present in every aspect of your system. Making changes to frameworks often means changing the entire system. If you are making some changes to the framework, it implies that we are changing the system itself. So a task for experienced developers and architects. So it's up to the uh, it's a task for the experienced developers and architects. So here are some guidelines for new framework. So new framework guidelines. So understand the target style system. The first point is understanding the target style system. What style we are using? Enumerate all the rules and constants in concrete terms. So write down what are the rules and constants we are applying on the style, on the style, and provide example design patterns and corner cases. So what are the design patterns we are using? What are the corner cases? So this is understanding the uh, target style first. Now the second point is limit the framework to the rules and constants of the style. So do not let a particular target applications needs creep into the framework. So now we have a framework. We have a framework and we have some application. Uh, uh, but don't do the changes in the application so that. It will creep into the framework. Do not let the particular target application applications needs. If there are some needs of the application. Uh, do not let it uh, creep into our framework. So we have to limit the framework to the rules and constant of the style. And the third, uh, second is a rule, a rule of three for application. You can check what is the rule of three for application. So the next point is choose the framework scope. Using the scope for the framework, we have a framework does not necessarily have to implement all possible stylistic advantages. Example dyna uh, dynamism or distribution. So our framework is not necessary to implement all the possible stylistic advantages. And the next is avoid over engineering. So don't add capabilities simply because they are clever or cool. So in a, in our framework, 
we have to keep it to the minimal we don't have to add anything extra only we only because it looks uh, clever or cool uh, don't add any capabilities extra capabilities so especially if non target application won't use they won't use them our application is uh, there's no need for our, our application so just avoid doing over engineering so this often add a complexity and reduce performance so so adding this uh, extra features what it will only add complexity and reduce the performance of our framework so avoid over engineering that's the point so the next is limit overhead for application developers so every framework induces some overhead so every framework has some overhead classes must inherit from framework based classes communication mechanism limited every framework has some style we have to follow uh, we can call it as overhead so some examples are given here such as classes must inherit from framework based classes communication mechanisms limited so all these are over overheads try to put a, put as little overhead as possible on the framework users so we have to keep in uh, keep it in mind that we have to limit the overhead for application developers and the next point is develop strategies strategies and patterns for legacy systems and components uh, almost every large application will need to include elements that were not built to work with the target framework and develop strategies for incorporating and wrapping this so here uh, the point is develop strategies and patterns for legacy systems and components So this were the point. I will go to the first. These are the all points for building a new framework. Understanding the target style, I limit the framework to the rules and constraints of the style. The framework scope, avoid over engineering. Limit overhead for application developers. Develop strategies and patterns for legacy systems and components. So the next is concurrency. so concurrency is one of the most difficult concerns to address in implementation uh introduction of subtle bugs deadlock rest condition in a uh, operating system you might come across this deadlock and rest condition and uh, another topic on which there are uh, okay there are it's just saying that there are books written on this topic deadlock and rest conditions so this rest rest conditions Risk condition means the output depends on the execution. How the execution is happening. Sequence of execution. How uh, it depends on the sequences. So concurrency is often an architecture level concern. Decisions can be made at the architecture level. So concurrent uh, concurrency is the architecture level concern. So we have to make the decisions at the architecture level itself. Uh, it should be done carefully. Much concurrency management can be embedded into the architecture of framework itself. So the concurrency we have to take it into account at the architecture level itself. Uh, should be done carefully. And consider our earlier example, uh, or uh, how the pipe and filter architectures are made concurrent without direct user involvement. So the, we have to keep in mind about the keep it in mind about the concurrency and uh, it should be done at the architectural level itself so the next is generative technologies so with a sufficiently detailed architectural model various implementation artifacts can be generated so if we have a detailed architectural model we have if you have built a very good architecture so there are various implementation artifacts that can be generated directly So we have seen uh, we have generated the pseudo code from the class diagram so it is one of the generative technologies uh, we are drawing the class diagram and we are generating the pseudo code the entire systems implementations requires extremely detailed models including behavioral specification so for uh, the architectural model should be uh, sufficiently detailed so it requires extremely detailed models including behavioral specification the behavioral specification should be mentioned in the architectural model and more feasible in uh, domain specific context now the first was uh, generating the entire system implementations the second is skeleton or interfaces so this one is uh, what we did in our user class uh, generating the skeleton of the code from the class diagram so 
uh, skeletons or interfaces with detailed structure and interface specification. So we can uh, generate a skeleton with a detailed structure and interface specification. And the third, uh, the next is a uh, compositions. The example is glue code so with sufficient data about binding between two elements. So this again a generative technology. So what we require sufficient data about the binding between the two elements. What are elements we have? We require sufficient data about the binding between the two elements. Next is maintaining consistency. So strategies for maintaining one way or round the trip mapping. So in the starting slides, uh, you might have seen this uh, one way and a round trip mapping. Then create and maintain traceability links from architecture implementation elements. So uh, create and maintain links. We have architecture and we have implementation elements. There should be some links. Uh, if there are there is some change in the implementation, the change uh, should be there in the architecture it also. And if there is some we are changing some architectural uh, aspect, the change should also there should be there in the implementation also. So there should be some link between the architectural and the implementation. So explicit links in a database in architectural models in code comments can all help with consistency checking. So here's some example is given explicit links in a database in architectural models in code comments can, uh, can all help with the consistency. Make the architectural model part of the implementation. So what it means is while implementing uh, implementing the architecture, just always uh, keep in uh, keep it in mind that we have architectural, we have to follow this. Make it a part of a implementation, not like we have just uh, drawn some architecture and, and we have just implementing without keeping in mind that we have some architectural architecture. So when the model changes, the implementation adapts automatically. So if there are some link between the architecture and implementation. If we are changing the architecture, the implementation also adapt according to the architecture. Or if we, we have some changes in the implementation, the architecture will also change. So there, there should be consistency. May involve internal generation. So it, it may also involve internal generation. Uh, generate some or all of the implementation from the architecture. This is the previous point we have seen. Generating some or all of the implementation from the architecture. I think this is the last slide we see today. Okay. The next is also on implementation. Right? Yes. Let me show the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next one is also extension of this implementation. Whatever the implementation you are doing using UML or um, RStudio, they are the implementation models. Implementing different architectures using these architectures you are getting a skeleton code which helps you to write the code for the desired software okay so we'll cover a little bit i'll have cover karlo okay so you see the concept this is the examples different frameworks for Python filter and a different frameworks for the C2 style. First one is uh, the Python filter. It's in the sort of PPT, Python filter architecture style. So components are the filter organized linearly from nuggets to character string pipes. So we have components uh, which are the filter uh, which, uh, which, are, which are organized in a linearly manner which communicates through character string pipes. So these are the connectors. The strings are the connectors and the filters are the components. These are the connectors. Filters may run concurrently. Filters may run concurrently on partial data. So uh, filters, all these filters can run concurrently on partial data itself. In general, all input in general, all input comes in through the left and all output exists from the right. So the input will be from the first uh, filter and output from the last filter. This is pipe and filter. So first framework is uh, standard I/O. So it's based on the pipe and filter architecture. So the standard I/O framework is used in a C programming language. 
each process is a filter so each of this process this uh, here is the example is get one bread from user all these are filter we have uh, each process the filter reads input from standard input that is standard in stdin and uh, writes uh, writes output to standard output std out standard output also a third unbuffered output stream called standard error uh, is not considered here the, there's also a third uh, unbuffered output stream that we are considering just to read uh, a standard input and standard output low and high level operations the operations available are get character put character uh, this uh, what this do is move one character at a time get character put character and uh, print of scanf is move and format entire string so uh, so we have processes standard input standard output and we have some operations high level operations and low level operations so in low level uh, low level operations we have get character put character is move one character at a time so we consider this example uh, in low level uh, operations only one char character will move at a time from here to here and in high level like in printf and scanf in print f and scanf we will have the entire string entire uh, characters we will move from one other so different implementations may vary in details this is the standard input output framework so now the four points we have seen in the last slide evaluating the framework so here we are seeing a standard uh, standard io so the four point we will see is platform support fidelity metric assumptions and efficiency so the platform support so it supports uh, available with most if not all implementations of c programming languages so it is available with most of the c programming languages standard input output and operates somewhat differently on os with no concurrency and the operating systems with uh, which have no concurrency it operates somewhat differently on those operating systems so the next point is fidelity Fidelity is the degree of exactness. Uh, uh, good support for developing C and F applications. So uh, this framework has a good support for developing these applications, C and F applications, but no restriction that apps have to use this style. style. But there is no rest restriction that uh, app uh, have to use this style only. Standard input output. They can go for some different style also. The third point is the matching assumptions. So filters are processes and the pipes are uh, implicit. So here the filter are processes and the pipes are implicit. In process, P and F applications might require modification. And the four point, fourth point is efficiency. So how efficient is the framework? So whether filters make maximal use of concurrency is partially up to the filters. So we have seen that the filters can uh, run concurrently. And we have different filters. These filters can run concurrently, but whether filter makes maximal use of this concurrency is partially up to the filter, up to the filter implementation, and partially up to the OS. So, if the are the filters are using this concurrency, depends on the implementation and uh, on the OS operating system. So, the next framework is Java I/O, Java Input Output Framework. So standard I/O framework used in Java language. So we have seen, so we know Java is object-oriented language, object-oriented. So can be used for in-process or inter-process P and F applications. So Java I/O can be used for in-process also or inter-process P and F application. Uh, all stream classes derive from input stream or output stream. So all the stream classes uh, used in the Java I/O. They will be derived from input stream or output stream. Uh, distinguish objects system dot in system dot out for writing to process standard stream. So if you are familiar with the Java language, uh, while uh, typing to the console, we use system dot out dot print ln. And while uh, taking the input from the user, we use system dot in. So these are two distinguish objects for writing to process standard stream. Additional capabilities of formatting, buffering. So added by creating composite strings, example of formatting buffered input stream. So uh, there are some additional capabilities also like formatting, buffering. But for this, we have to create uh, like classes like formatting buffered input stream. 
this has an additional capability. So now we are editing this framework. Again, the four points. The first point is platform support. So available with all Java implementations on many platforms. So it is available with all implementation Java implementations and platform specific differences abstracted away. So if there are uh, the differences, platform specific differences are abstracted away. Then we have fidelity. So it has good support for developing PNF applications, Java IO, it has good support. Uh, but uh, no restriction that apps have to use this style again the same point you have seen in the uh, last framework uh, no no restriction on uh, using the same framework i uh, can go with a different style the third is a uh, matching assumptions uh, easy to construct uh, intra and inter process pandf applications and uh, concurrency can be issue concurrency can be issue in java.io many calls are blocking so these are some assumptions and uh, the fourth is efficiency. Users have fine grained control over uh, buffering. So, and the next is a very high efficiency mechanism memory, mapped IO channels not available but are in java.ni. So, uh, these are not available in the java.io but uh, they are available in java.new IO, new input output. So, these are the four points for java.io. So here's something about the C2 style. Uh, layer, uh, C2 is a like a asynchronous event-based architectural style. So layered style with event-based communication over two-way broadcast buses. So we can see here in the diagram, it's a layered style and event-based. Yeah, C2 is a event-based style and the strict rules on concurrency dependencies and so on. Uh, many frameworks developed for different languages focus on two alternative Java frameworks here. So the two uh, frameworks we will use is lightweight C2 and flexible C2. So the first one is the lightweight C2. So it has 16 classes. In 16 classes, uh, we have 3000 lines of code. Components and connectors extend abstract base class. So we can see here we have the component, a component uh, abstract class. We have connector abstract class. So component and connectors extend abstract base classes. And then we have concurrency queuing handle at individual component connector level. So we can see that under the component abstract class, we have component thread and uh, under the con uh, connector abstract class, we have connector thread. So these are for concurrency, queuing handling at individual component connector level. And messages are request or notification objects. So here the messages, we can see the generalization relationship, uh, request and notifications. Messages are a request or notification objects. So this is a lightweight C2 framework. So we have components connectors if, uh, extend the base class. We have concurrency queuing handle at individual component connector level and uh, messages are request or object uh, notification objects. And again, the four points evaluating the lightweight C2 framework. Uh, so first is the platform support. So the avail uh, available with all Java implementations on many platforms. So it is available with all Java implementations. Second is fidelity, assist developers developers with many aspects of C2, but does not enforce these constants. So again, it assists developers with uh, many aspects of C2, but uh, does not enforce the constants. Use threading and queuing policies up to the individual elements. So uh, it is up to the individual elements to use the threading policy, threading and queuing policy. Third one is matching assumptions. So we have component connector, many classes must inherit from distinguished base classes. So as we have seen in the diagram, the component and connector will have to in inherit from the distinguished base classes. And all messages must be in dictionary form. That is one assumption. And the fourth one is efficiency. So it is lightweight framework. Efficiency may depend on threading and queuing policy implemented by individual elements. The efficiency, it is the first, it is lightweight and the second, 
uh, it depends on the threading and queuing policy implemented by individual element. So in the fidelity, we can see the last point leaves threading and queuing policy up to the individual elements. So it, it depends on that implementation uh, by the individual element. The second is flexible. So we have to see lightweight. The second one is flexible C2 framework. So here we have 73 classes. In 73 classes, we have eight and a half thousand lines of code to use the interfaces rather than base classes. So here you can see we have interfaces rather than base classes. Uh, trading policy for applications is pluggable. Here you can see the uh, queuing policy, threading policy. So these uh, all are pluggable. You can add this. And message queuing policy is also pluggable. So the message queuing policy is also pluggable. The main difference is uh, you just interface rather than base classes. So just excuse me for a sec. So we have these uh, four points here. Uh, platform support the same four points for evaluating this uh, uh, C2 framework, flexible one. The first one is the platform support. So available with all Java implementation on many platforms. Uh, same as the previous one. Then the fidelity uh, assist developers with many aspects of C2, but does not enforce these constants. Uh, this is also same as the previous one, assist developers with many aspects, but uh, does not enforce any constant and uh, provides several alternative application wide threading and queuing policy. So it provides uh, many threading and queuing policy. Uh, and third is the uh, matching assumption. Then component connector main classes must implement distinguished interfaces. So in the previous uh, lightweight you have seen implements uh, or uh, abstract classes. So here it is distinguished interfaces. And the message uh, can be any serializable object. So this is the assumption. And the efficiency user can easily swap out and tune threading and queuing policies without disturbing the re uh, disturbing remainder of application code. So uh, it is efficient in a way that user can swap out and queuing, uh, tune threading and queuing policies. So the the next one is application implementing uh, lunar lander in different frameworks. Singole. Yes. Aaj is yahan par rok do. Tum aake ye Thursday ko you cover karna. Okay. Okay sir. You cover on Thursday this lunar lander part. Aaj kya hota tum hi cover karna. Okay. Aaj yahan par rok do. Okay. So chapter 16 may implementation of the lunar lunar lambda and slide 16 say I'm not sure okay 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 so we'll close it down today it is uh, it is it is around uh, 540 so we covered a little bit more so we'll be meeting on today the Tuesday we'll be meeting on Thursday Ingole Bhaiya will cover the rest portion of this chapter on Thursday uh, okay we'll cover the implementation part how the lunar lander is being implemented using Python. That's the <clears throat> theory class. And for the for the tomorrow's lab class, Ingolebaya will send a link to download Acme. Acme where you use very much port, roll, color, colli. Ajaratme, please go through that. How Acme helps to identify port, roll, color, colli. So tomorrow you start implementing as Rathko download karo. Please try to download. And tomorrow we'll do in the lab the same, the same uh, bank consortium and little bit of, we'll discuss about the library management. A big library, for example, you check in the net how big the Newark library, Washington library, the this town libraries are how big they are, how many books are there, how many people join there. So we always, I always tell that the architecture is hard when the, when the software size is large. So tomorrow we'll start thinking about another software 
that is library management and since you have implemented in r studio i want that you should be able to complete the acme within one and a half hour then next one and a half hour we'll try to work on <coughs> library management software another software to implement the library process okay so go through that ingole aap library management ki srs bhej diye the yes yes sir bhej diye the ha bhej diye the so it is on your system only go through that and tell भैया आपने ये छोड़ दिया है आपने ये छोड़ दिया है आपने ये छोड़ दिया है सो आई वॉन्ट दैट टाइप ऑफ फीडबैक फ्रॉम यू ओनली और क्या बाकी था ये आर्ट स्टूडियो कुछ बाकी थी लास्ट क्लास में ना नहीं पूरा कवर हुआ था पूरा लाइब्रेरी मैनेजमेंट नहीं हुआ था नहीं कवर दिस बैंक कॉन्सोटियम इन आर्ट में देन विल वेरी फास्ट वन एंड हाफ आवर एग्जैक्टली घड़ी देख के बता देना अभी बंद करो ऐसे बोल देना वन एंड हाफ आवर के बाद और देन हाफ एन आवर आकमे में करेंगे या तो आर्ट स्टूडियो किसी में भी आकमे अगर चल ही रहा है तो आकमे में करेंगे लाइब्रेरी मैनेजमेंट ठीक है बॉय यू आल्सो ट्राई इन द हॉस्टल और इन द इन द हाउस हाउ यू कैन एक्सटेंड द आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ द लाइब्रेरी मैनेजमेंट सॉफ्टवेयर so that it will be easy for you to implement tomorrow okay okay so we'll close it down we'll close it down in wale in wale aap attendance le lo yes aap debo pe aapke paas bhej do kon option hai theek hai okay main okay. i'm quitting okay i'm quitting okay okay bye students bye tomorrow we'll meet at 9 o'clock for the lab okay okay bye bye Mahendra tomorrow you come in right time don't why are you getting delayed by 2 minutes why not 2 minutes early change your thought process okay sir change your thought process galti 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 1 minute ki galti galti hai ab jab tak nahi mehsoos karoge 1 minute ek din galti ho jayegi so be a good boy 100% no 99 okay 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 bye 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 i am quitting Okay, guys. I will call out name of those who are present uh, directly. No name. Gole sir. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, uh, Pratik Jaiswal sir, please mark it. Sir, actually sir, I have class sir. Okay, okay, okay. Pratik Jaiswal. So, Andrila Shah present. Akshay Kumar present. Yeah, Andrila Shah. Akshay Kumar present. Yeah, Banu Silaka present. And only two people present. I will call out the name of those who are present. Okay. So Banot Silaka is present. Yeah, Chandra Kant Kumar present. Then uh, Som Shekhar is present. Uh, Rishab Soni is present. Jitendra Gora is present. Yeah, Mahendra Kumar. And we have. रिकास निर्मल चंद्र पांडा राहुल राहुल साहू इज प्रेजेंट राकेश कुमार रणवीर सिंह शिवम दालमिया नेक्स्ट शुभम कुलकर्णी सिद्धार्थ एंड लास्ट वन इज विकास कुमार टोटल आर Seventeen and okay, okay you can leave now. So download the Acme Studio for tomorrow's lab. So it is not a sir. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Sir, I have downloaded the Acme Studio. Yeah. 